Hello everyone, Chris Abagli here with Anthony Williams on this sunny and Sunday afternoon. Got a great day for baseball, your Rockhounds taking on the visiting Walnut Creek Crawdads. Anthony, what do you expect today? I expect a great game. You know, it's a little windy, so we might not see too many home runs. Like the last game we did, yeah. we didn't see too many home runs, but we seen a lot of balls get drilled in the outfield. But look for the outfitters to have a tough day. Yeah, definitely. I mean, last game, too, you know, we saw a lot of a lot of balls, like you said, hit the outfield, and the wind just kept on carrying them and carrying them. So, you know, I feel like if Carson today works down in the zone, we shouldn't have a problem with that. Should keep the, you know, game close. And as long as the Rockhounds hit, Rockhounds should come out on the top. Yeah, Carson is definitely a great pitcher. The last time I seen him, he got roughed up a little bit, but he did bounce back with a few good innings. Yeah. As was, he always does. Mm -hmm. It was at a Neptune Beach Pearls game, right? Yeah. Just had nine runs in the first inning and just kind of struggled the entire game. He had good stuff, just left it all over the plate. In the middle of the plate, I should say. You see Haas warm up here. Strong arm from Haas too. Clocks in, I think, I want to say around 90 miles an hour. So, yeah, Haas definitely. He has a lot of tools that he can use. I think he has an, a changeup that yep. he uses also. And he has that 12 to 6 too. That just kind of falls mm -hmm. right off the table. Yeah, when he gets it going, he really gets it going. Alrighty, so here's your leadoff hitter for the crowd. That's John Ballard. Center fielder, John Ballard. Playing center field today. Senior, 5'6", 155, playing at the College of Colorado Mesa. You see Haas ready to start this game off. Takes a sign. Up high. Yeah, look for Haas to really try to feel himself during the first couple of innings, and then once he figures it out, yeah, definitely he's got to find his stuff, you know, find what's working and everything like that. You know, as long as he keeps the ball down in the zone, has that fastball curveball combo, as Bally takes the ball right there, I feel like he should be pretty perfectly fine today. Nunez calls for the sign. Haas delivers. In there for a strike. Yeah, there's that first strike to really get him going. Maybe we see another strike to follow that one up. Yeah, I think uh, he might throw a change up here or something like that. Keep him out in front. Hopefully get Bally to roll over here. Another fastball in there for a strike two. Yeah, as a pitcher, you never want to get down on the count. That's when you start to really overthink yeah. what you want to do. And once you, you overthink, then... You aim it in there, and then you just you know fall apart. It's mm -hmm. not good. See if Haas throws the curveball here. In there. Base hit to left center. Right past LeBeau. Smith gets it in. Big turn over there from Ballard. Ben Skinner. Yeah, you caught that one. He did try to go with the, you know, curve ball. Yeah. Left it up, though. Like I said, I mean, he's got to really got to keep the ball down in the zone and away from these hitters. As Skinner comes, steps up. Playing right field today for the Crawdads. Harvard, how about that? Smart wow, kid. Very smart. You know, I kind of need a tutor anyway, so I might try <laughs> to talk to him after the game. Yeah, definitely. Skinner takes a strike outside from Haas. 0-1. Could see Ballard here go. Taking a pretty decent lead at first pitch. Haas working quick. Big lead. Sets. There goes Ballard. Throw from Nunez, not in time. Bobbles it a little bit. That's yeah, a good jump right there from from Ballard. The the catch and throw by Nunez didn't. It wasn't very smooth, and you kind of see him lose grip of the ball. Yeah, I think he kind of got. I don't know if he was surprised or what that Ballard went, but Nunez just couldn't get that transfer going to 
to throw it down to second base for a nice clean throw. Yeah, he should have anticipated it because, like you said, Baller did have big lead. a big lead. Mm -hmm. So Baller takes the lead at second. Hot sets. Steps off. Sounded like his third baseman, Webster, called for that. Yeah, great communication. Yeah. What you need. I mean, what you want. Yeah, you need that in all sports. Mm-hmm. Hot sets. Pitch. Strike. Swing and a miss from Skinner. Nice fastball. Yeah, look for a Hoss to be aggressive now as he's up 2-1 right now on the batter. I really feel like for him to be successful today, too, is that he's got to attack these hitters. He mm -hmm. can't waste any pitches. You know, he's got to come right at them, whether that be the changeup, curveball, even fastball. See sets. Foul back. The skinner's staying alive. Yeah, like you say, he has to be aggressive because I went to the Giants game yesterday and Cueto wasn't being very aggressive, so they were. They how, about, were how about Cueto swings yesterday? Did you see those? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they looked kind of awkward. Those are the ugliest swings in the bigs yeah. by far, man. Yeah, Cueto, he was getting rocked in yeah. the beginning and then he. Started getting aggressive, but he was pulled like shortly after. Pitch, ooh, just missed on that curveball. It's a good curveball though. That was a good miss. Told he, six right off the table. He definitely tried to make him chase after that. Mm -hmm. one. See if Haas does a fastball here. Skinner steps in. Trying to move that runner and Ballard over to third. At least get a productive out out of it. Mm -hmm. As you see a decent lead for Ballard. Ooh, mm. a little chin music up at the head. Skinner and able to uh, get away from that. If you're a batter, would you rather take the hit and move to first? Uh, I'd, without a doubt, take the hit. <laughs> you got to take one for the team. Whether that be in your head, in the ankle, <laughs> whatever. You got to get that on-base percentage up. Yeah, just make sure it hits the helmet, exactly. right? Exactly. <laughs> The pitch. Up. Let's see, walk Skinner. Haas looks a little bit frustrated with himself. First and second, no one. DH. Alex Baeza up at the plate now. DH in today for the Crawdads. Big lefty. Yeah, with two on and no outs for Haas, you kind of. You kind of don't want to get yourself down at the moment. Yeah, you don't want to usually lose your confidence. Yeah, exactly. I think right here for Haas, he's got to stay away. Hopefully, maybe throw a changeup to Baeza. Have him roll over. As you see, Lebeau is playing over there with Ballard a second. Haas throws a up and away, ball one. Yeah, he just has to make sure and he gets a grounder in the infield. And once you get that, you're pretty much okay. Because yeah, you could I either mean, get the out at third or you could get the double play, you know, just something. Sets the pitch. Up and away again. Ball two. I just taking the sign from the third base coach. 2 0 here, the count. Ball three, low and away. Haas still just not finding his release point so far. Yeah, down 3-0. This next one has to for sure be a strike. You can't play with him at all with this pitch. In there, strike one. 3-1. One. See if Baeza... At least get something going here for the Crawdads. Yeah. And Prime he, opportunity. He has a free swing if he wants to use it. If he gets a good enough look. Here we go. Strike two. Swing and a miss from Baeza. Big cut. It'll be interesting here if uh, Crawdads do a little hit and run. Maybe fool with the defense here.
Haas takes the sign. Pitch. Runners go. Swing and a miss from Baeza. Got down it. to throw third. Webster oh, save yeah. from wow. Ballard. Just got in there. Yeah, once Nunez threw the ball, I thought he was for sure going to get the out. Yeah, I mean, that looked like a clean transfer throw. Mm -hmm. I mean, perfect throw, too. I mean, just right in the baseline. Mm -hmm. And Webster just, the ball just got there late. Looked like a little bit low of a throw over there from Nunez. But uh, great job from the crowd for stealing right there. You see second and third, one out. Haas chooses to go from the windup here. Outside ball one to the hitter now, Matt Pullen. Just outside ball two. See Haas taking his time up there on the mound. If Hoss could possibly get a strikeout, that would be very great for this team going forward. Ball three. Three and oh now to Pullen. Pullen actually played for the Rockhounds last summer. I don't know if you knew that or not, but. No, I didn't. I learned something new <laughs> every day. 3 0. In there, swing and a miss. Got the green light there. Three and one now. Defense played back. Rockhounds would give up the run here for an out. Swing and a miss again. Strike two. 3 2 ball gets away from Haas. LeBeau, good back up there. Maybe sleeping over there at third is Ballard. Yeah, Ballard was Could have jumped on sleep. that opportunity. <laughs> He's seen it too late, and he thought about going, but if he went, he would have for sure. Been Gotta out. have your eye on the ball the whole time. Mm -hmm. See what Haas can do here. 3 2. Pitch. Foul back first base side. Pratty running out of room. Ooh. Just missed it over there on first base side. Looks like the ball kind of went back in play there. Pratty unable to corral that. Yeah, he lost track of the ball. Like you said, the wind, it moves it plays that a ball factor, around. Definitely yeah. here. That's for sure. As Poland gets a second life here, 3-2. Swing and a miss, strike three. Good pitch from Haas. Good fastball. Poland strikes out. Yeah, Two outs, second and third. David Langer. Up at bat now. Had two home runs the other day. Mm, two. I think the win helped with both of them, but, you know, I mean, a home <laughs> run's a home run. Yeah. You can't take, can't take away from it. Yeah, you can say that again. <laughs> See if Langer get these two runners in for the crawdads. Haas looking to get out of the lane. No damage. Pitch in there. Strike one. Yeah, he's feeling it now. Getting it warmed up. Yeah. I think he got a little bit of confidence from that uh, strikeout. Mm -hmm. Pitch from Haas. Curveball down in the dirt. Good block from Nunez. One, one, the count. So you hear the wind picking up a little bit here. I was taking his time. Looks over at third to Ballard a few times. Sets. Swing and a miss from Langer. Down one and two. If he can get out of this inning with no damage, just think about how much confidence oh, that's, that yeah, gives the, the confidence whole team. Booster. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wonder if he mixes in that curveball again. Maybe even that changeup down low. As Carson throws. Fastball just... Missed. Outside. Two and two the count. Langer looked like he uh, had a little miss up in the head or something like that. It looks like he kind of got scared, hoping that wasn't called for a strike. 
And if I'm Hawes, I'm going with that curveball. Try to make him chase it possibly. Or right down right down at his knees for the strike. Flager pops it up left center. Fossilina under it. Makes the catch. No runs for the Crawdads. Rockhands able to get out of it. Come back in the bottom of half. Carson Hawes, thanks for watching the Solano College Sports Network. Welcome back, everyone. Dominic Fossilina up here at the plate, lead it off of the Rockhounds. As you see, the pitcher for the crowd is today, Lorenzo Gomez. Southpaw up there on the mound. Yeah, if you're at a Rockhounds, you, you want to get some runs going right now. So now Hawes has the time to, to relax. Yeah, get some you know confidence up there on the mound again. As Fossilina takes a ball out, want to know. That's the key, though. I mean, pitching, if you have run support, too, mm -hmm. you can work with your stuff a little bit more, you know, get that confidence and everything. Let's go med sets. Ball low at the feet of Fossilina. 2-0. Oh. Let's go med today. Looks to be doing the, the set only. No wind-up. Yeah, when I seen Cueto pitch last, well, yesterday afternoon. Yeah, he he has a weird like. He's got like five, six different deliveries. It's crazy. His Gomez throws it in there, strike one. Yeah, I was actually paying attention to his delivery, and it was just weird. It's yeah, it's definitely. I mean, he has a quick quick pitch. He has a little you know cradle rock, <laughs> and then he does the whole wind. Yeah, it's a little bit of everything. His Gomez sets. Fossilina tries to the right center, but under it for an out is Skinner. Now batting catcher Mickey Nunez. Mickey Nunez is up here at the plate now for the Rockhounds, hitting second. Lefty lefty matchup. Probably not too happy about it as Nunez, but. It's summer ball. You gotta work on your on your weaknesses as he takes a strike high. Yeah, that's the great thing about this summer league. You have time to develop your game. You see what people expose about you and you work on it. Exactly. That's why you see so many of these games, you know, high runs, mm -hmm. everything like that. Just just so people can get working. 
Yeah, he could not hold up there. 0-2 with like a change up inside from Gomez. Pitch. Curveball just missed on the outside corner. Ball one. Yeah, he had a lot of motion into that curveball. That was a good, that was a good, really good pitch right there from Gomez. Probably a setup pitch here. We'll see. Maybe a fastball in, looks like. Nunes just pulled it foul over there at first base side. Yeah, just stay alive at this point. If you see a pitch that you really like, swing at it. Exactly, you got to protect it up there at the plate. Curveball. Up into right center again. Ballard makes the catch. A little shuffle over there to Skinner. Out number two. Willie Hamza. As Willie Hamza, DHNA for the Rock Island, steps up to the plate. Hamza looks like he has uh, some floods on up there. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Yeah, I've never seen anybody wear their pants like that. That doesn't look uh, too pretty. <laughs> yeah. Brown University. That's Hamza. First pitch swinging. Base hit to right field. Now batting right fielder Grant St. Martin. Really aggressive right there in that first pitch from Hamza. Mm -hmm. Yeah, getting the first hit for the Rock Hounds today. As you see, Grant St. Martin. Big right fielder from Sonoma State, sent 6'3", 245. Yeah, he's almost the same. Well, he's bigger than me. I'm 6'2", 240. You know? It's just a big. That's, <laughs> that's big, I mean, especially for college ball. He's sitting at what? I mean, he's a freshman, so he's got to be 19, 20. Wow. Whew. Ball out from Gomez. 2-0. Yeah, St. Martin having an excellent year. I think every game we've broadcast, he's hit a he's home made, run. Yeah, he's hit a home run or at least, you know, pitched to at least keep the Rock Hounds in the game. Mm -hmm. So he's doing his job, that's for sure. Takes a change up there, outside corner. 2-1 the count. See Hamza He's taking a decent lead over there at first. Mm -hmm. It's getting bigger and bigger. Just misses on the outside part of the plate. Three and one. Looks like their strategy based on these first four pitches is work St. Martin away. Mm. See if he can roll over some. Yeah, because once he makes contact with a pitch inside or Kind of high on top, then yeah. it's pretty much over. Ball four as St. Martin walks. Moves Hamza over there a second. Center fielder, Max Smith. As Max Smith, center fielder there for the Rock Hounds. Gets an opp RBI opportunity here with two outs. Another lefty lefty matchup. Hansa in scoring position now. And Max Smith, he has an opportunity to bring Hansa home. First pitch swing and grounded over to the second. Able to make the play. It's valid. Alrighty, that ends the bottom of the first. Here we are, at the top of the second, right after this. Hi, this is Willie Homza, and thank you for watching the Solana College Sports Network.
Welcome back, everyone. As Josh Ballard steps in for the Crawdads, leading off the, the top of the second inning. Haas looking to have another good inning here as he got out of damage top half of the first. Hits Ballard, first pitch on the shoulder. Takes his base. Catcher. Yeah, if you're Hawks, that's not how you want to start the inning off. Not at all. Shows, again, a little frustration up there on the mound. As Jake Allen steps up. Lefty, 5'11", 195. Also goes to Harvard. Ball out from Haas. As you see, Ballard did a little fake move. A little fake steal over there first. Yeah, we have players from Harvard, Brown University. We have a lot of smart kids on the field today. Yeah, I mean, I want to say they have two or three of them now that I think about it. Ball up. 2-0 to Allen. I mean, how about that? Playing at Harvard and, I mean, you're playing summer ball here in California. Man, that's kind of far. <laughs> in there, strike one from Haas. As you see, Allen... Talking to the umpires, seeing where that was. Haas works quickly up there. Sets. Not too aggressive of a lead from Ballard over there first. Ball three. Three and one. See Haas, so far today, not getting ahead of these these hitters really 3 1 2 1 counts. Sets. There goes Ballard. Ball in the dirt. It gets past Nunes. Ballard takes a turn. Big turn. Throws over to Webster, but Ballard back at second. Yeah, Nunes hasn't been able to. To really get the ball out of his hands. Yeah, except having, for that one throw at yeah, there. Having a hard time so far. As left fielder Nick Simmons steps up to the plate. Again, first and second, no outs. See if the crowd can at least get something in here this inning. Hawes able to work out of trouble last inning. Mm. Yeah, and if you're Hawes, you have to remember that the same thing happened last inning and you got out of it with no run scored. So that's a way to really motivate yourself to do the exactly. same thing. Exactly. You can't, you know, hang your head on anything like that. And he knows, like like he's just said, he's got a little bit of confidence knowing that you know, he was just in this position last inning. Mm -hmm. Haas sets. Small lead. Second from Ballard. Swing and a miss. 0-2. Yeah, Josh Beller, he looks like he wants to go at second right now. Yeah. Jumpy feet. Wants to run. <laughs> Pitch. Strike three. Fastball up from Haas. Able to get Simmons out. Second baseman. Dalen now up for the Crawdads. Playing second base. Dalen Clickton in the nine hole. Plays at Hawaii. Yeah, my friend, she went to Hawaii, but she said it's too expensive out there. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> I mean, you're paying pretty much for the view of everything. <laughs> Toss steps off. Ballot over that second, playing with him. Shows a little frustration with his shortstop. Not really communicating. Sets. Looks. 
swing and a miss. I was able to get first pitch strike for, I believe, the second time today. A second or third. Yeah. yeah. Ballard's dancing over there. Open hand for Vinny. Able to get back in there is Ballard. Yeah, they're trying to get Ballard to really settle down yeah. over there. He's he's definitely jumpy. He's got a lot of energy over there, second base. Oh, sets. Taking his time to pitch. Swing and a miss again. Fastball. 0 2. The fastball has been the pitch that's really been successful for Hawes in the first two innings. Yeah, and I think that, especially that fastball up, you know, it's really keep them, kept them uh, off balance. Pitch from Hawes. Up again. Ball this time. 1 2. Might have been a set of pitch right there from Hawes. Might come back with that 12 to 6. See a windy day here at Billy and Louise Yarborough Stadium. Ballard's jumping over there a second again. Inside. Oh, that just was in on the one. hands. See if collecting can get some out of this. Move the runners over at the very least. So how looks back. Delivers. Strike three, swing and a miss from collecting. Great pitch right there from Hawes. Center fielder, John yeah. Bauer. Now with two consecutive strikeouts, now you want to see Hawes really deliver. Like we know he can pitch. We've all seen him pitch here at Solano for the Falcons. Exactly. And I've seen him retire at least like eight players, nine players a game. So we all know he can pitch. And as long as he gets in his zone, he should be successful. Still in there. Strike one. And once, outside part of the play. Once he gets into that zone, it's hard to get. Yeah, him out. I mean, once he gets in a rhythm, I think I really feel like he's, you know, unhittable. Yeah. This all sets. Looks back at Ballard taking a big lead over there. Second. Change up, blown away. Ball one. See Lebeau gives some signs to, to Haas. Pitch, inside out swing, just foul. Was well, able to corral that over. Looks like a little inside out swing right there from Ballard. Just trying to stay alive there. Yeah. Now with Hawes up, two strikes to one ball. Do you play with him with his next pitch, or do you go for the kill? Uh, I mean, I think cause. Especially with how this is, the way he's been pitching, I feel like he's just got to go right here at Ballard. Maybe a fastball up and up and in on the hands as he delivers here. Ballard fouls it back. Nunes gives it a look. Out of play. Yeah, I feel like, I mean, that, that fastball was up right there, but I feel if he got that, you know, in a little bit more up on the hands, maybe that, that stays in play for a nice pop out to Pridey or even Nunes. Mm -hmm. Bowler looking to score from second base. Brothers. Ball up. Two and two. Yeah, Ballard with a huge lead, too. Yeah. But John on second base as Josh is in there at the plate. Or vice vice versa. Apologize for that. 
inside. Nunez is unable to catch that. Runners move up. Sets up a full count here, three and two. Nunez just still having a hard time behind the plate. Yeah, but that one, it was really close to the um, dollar that he thought it was going to hit him, maybe. Yeah. really feel like he was going to hit him right there. Harhaus throws it up and in, ball four, as he loads the bases. Right fielder, Ben Skinner. That's Ben Skinner. Bases juiced, two outs. See if Haas can work out of trouble here. Again, get out of an inning with no damage. Walked and stole a base last inning with Skinner. Yeah, looking to reach base again at the, at the play. Hawes in there. Strike one. Good way to start this off. In a jam like this, get ahead of the hitter. Hawes looking in. Nice skinner calls time. Hawes keeps looking over there at third. Keeping Ballard close as he delivers. Ball up and away. Yeah, Ballard jumped. Josh Ballard has been giving cause problems just yeah. because he's constantly moving around. And it's jumpy, yeah. You don't I mean, know when he's going to steal. Mm -hmm. As you see Haas steps off here. Maybe Ballard's getting in his head. You see Haas taking a few peeks before he pitches. Mm -hmm. Wind up. The pitch. In there. Strike two. Good fastball from Haas. Yeah, like I was saying, that fastball has been really effective for him. If he can get the curveball and the changeup going, then, like you say, he's pretty much unhittable. See what he throws here on the one-two count to Skinner. Ballard fakes. Ground ball to LeBeau. Takes it himself to second. Haas able to escape the inning. No damage. Up next inning. Or I should say next half inning for the Rock Hounds. Webster, Pridey, and Margiotto. We'll be back right after this. Hi, this is Garland Webster, and thank you for watching the Solano College Sports Network. As you see, Webster taking his first A-B of the day. Sophomore at Eastern New Mexico University. Former Webster, Solano Falcon. Webster also had a good college collegiate year. Yeah. 
for, for the Solano Falcons. Let's go miss sets. Hits Webster, first pitch, curveball. Down at the ankle will look like. So Webster takes his base. First baseman, Jack Pridey. As Pridey steps in. Pridey had an exceptional year at Solano. Falcons unable to make the playoffs, but Pridey had a stellar year, standout year. Friday swings, hits to the right field. Skinner under it makes the catch. Webster retreats back to first. One out here. Second baseman, Vinny Margiota. As Vinny Margiota steps up to the plate. Friday just got under that one in right field. Looking for the wind to help him out just a little bit, but Skinner able to make the catch over there in right field. Yeah, Margiota has been a great second baseman for the Rockville Rockhounds this season. Yeah, he uh, almost seems like a spark plug as he hits it a third right past Langer. Looked like it hit off the glove for a nice base hit to left field. First and second, one out. Sets up LeBeau. Margiota, he, situation. he always comes through when you need a hit or yeah. a defensive play. It seems like the ball is always near him. Always always finding him. Like I said, I mean, he's, like, he's like a spark plug. Always hustles, gives 110%. Mm -hmm. What you want in a guy. I see another, another lefty lefty matchup here. Well, takes it. First pitch strike. Yeah, LeBeau, the shortstop, 5'10", 160 pounds. It's a decent size. Yeah, for a baseball player? Yeah. <laughs> uh, looking at St. Martin, you're like... Yeah, I know, <laughs> two, 245, 6'4". <laughs> so LeBeau takes the ball just out, ball one. It's crazy the size difference between some of these players. Yeah. I mean, I mean, look at the Ballard brothers. I mean, they're sitting at what, maybe around five seven, around maybe one fifty. And you look at a guy like St. Martin. I mean, two forty. <laughs> <laughs> Curveball gets away from Allen up the first baseline. Runner's able to move up. Second and third sets up a two RBI possible situation here for LeBeau. See and if he can at least get one run in here. And also takes away the opportunity for a double play. Double play balls out of play. Yeah. As you see, corners look like they're in. Middle of the infield. Playing back, so it looks like the Crawdads would give up a run for an out. Let's go miss sets. Delivers ball up. Hit the head of the bow. Sets up a three and one count. See if Gomez just puts LeBeau up. Maybe set up that double play situation again. Swing and a miss. Lebo looking to lead the yard there. Yeah, if he could just get the ball into the outfield, that's guaranteed two runs. That's all you. That's all you need in this situation. I mean, especially with the defense playing back too. Let's go, miss throws it up. Ball four. Get a back from LeBeau. But yeah, I mean, with the, the defense playing back, I mean, you're looking for anything just to put in put in play. And I mean, the Crawdads are obviously, with the way they were playing, looking to get an out and give up that run. As Fossilina steps up for his second AB of the day. Flew out his first appearance. See if he can get something going for the Rockhounds as they have a base loaded one out. Fossilina. Oh, drops it over there to Ballard in the. Ooh. Ooh. 
Ooh. as if Webster scores on that crazy event play. Wow. Clickton dropped it over that second. Now batting catcher. Then he threw it over the ballot over that short. And it looked like looked like from our view, I mean from the monitor too, it looked like he got him over that first in Fossilina, but umpire was staring at the bag, making sure everyone knew that he was looking at it, but Yeah, maybe the toe just ah, touched yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that was a really, really close play. But Rockhound score. Take the lead one one to zero here. Curveball in there. Yeah, and going back to that last play, if you're the runner on first, there is nothing you can do at that point. No, I mean, yeah. that was a little pop-up to second, mm -hmm. or a little off the fist, and just a crazy play. Not much you can do, like you said. One-on-one right, go <laughs> one the count. As you see, Collicton throws it over to Ballard, and it looks like oh, just yeah. from there... The glove, then the foot, but umpire called him safe. Gomez pit. Base hit, center field. Run scores, Margiota. We'll see a nice hit from Nunez right there. It will stay in and drive that pitch to center field. That's a rock on second, two nothing lead. Yeah, known as having troubles on the defensive side, but that was a great way to get that confidence going with bringing home Margiota. Uh, exact confidence booster. Maybe he can get a confidence booster too. I mean, Haas definitely got it the first two innings, getting mm -hmm. getting away from those jams. And now he has a little bit of run support as Hanzo mm -hmm. takes a ball low. I mean, it's all about getting confidence. I mean, it's, if you have confidence up there at the plate or, you know, whether that be in the field, you're going to have a good game. Yeah, confidence, and you gotta have that swagger. That swagger, too. yeah, exactly. Can't play baseball without any swagger. <laughs> Hums with fouls the pack. One on one, the count. Hums just steps in. Gomez delivers. Curveball. Just misses. Like trying to go back door there. Good take from Hamza. Yeah, trying to make Hamza really chase after one. Maybe roll over. Over to Langer at third. Fastball up. Three and one. Gomez. Not really finding himself the fast few hitters. Giving up a couple runs. Mm -hmm. Now down 3-1 to Hamza. Man, that usually, happens. Saint Martin that usually happens when the other team gets runs. Then you start thinking about like your team getting runs or trying to do better. And once you start thinking, then you just take your mind off the game. Exactly. And doesn't want to walk Hamza here, put him on. As you got big man St. Martin. Up there on the on deck circle as Hamza walks. Mm. So that does indeed bring up Grand St. Martin. Right Base is loaded. Grand St. Martin. Yeah. Two outs. St. Martin looking to break open this game here for the Rock Outs. And now you're actually forced to pitch to St. Martin, which I don't think any pitcher wants to. Not whatsoever. Yeah. So this could either be a Grand Slam or a triple, maybe. He'll be lucky to keep it in the infield. That is for sure. As Gomez delivers in there, strike one inside part of the plate. Looked like it fooled Sam Martin as last at bat. They kind of threw him soft stuff away. Looked a little sh shocked right there. As Gomez sets. The pitch. Outside, ball one. St. Martin just has that casual, you know, just approach up there at the plate. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm a big guy. I'm going to hit it. <laughs> oh. 
inside for a strike. One and two to St. Martin. See if they'll go back out with uh, maybe a change up here. Maybe have them roll over, even chase. Mm -hmm. Good sequence of pitches so far from Gomez. Yeah, from That's Gomez. Gives the sign. Yeah, Gomez and Hawes really doing a great job today. In oh. there again, strike three, catches St. Martin looking. As he strikes out, bases loaded to the end of the inning. Up next for the Crawdads, for the top of the third, we have Baeza, Poland, and Lanker. We'll be back right after this. This is Mickey Nunez, and thank you for watching the Solano College Sports Network. Welcome back as uh, Alex Baeza leads it off for the Crawdads. Haas looking to not get himself into the situation he was in the first two innings. Man on first and second, no outs to see if he can take care of business here in the top half of the third as Baeza swings and misses 0 and 1. Yeah, I think Haas will be more aggressive going forward in this game. Definitely, I mean, is a two-run lead now. Has a little run support. Gets to work with the stuff just a little bit more. In there, strike two. Fastball. Not wasting any time. This body is down to 0-2. The pitch. Foul mm. back. Right in front of the booth here. By is able to stay alive. Haas is just heavy, heavy fastballs today so far. Does in the occasional curve, but really just trying to overpower these hitters with, with that 90 plus mile an hour fastball he has. Ball up and away. Yeah, Baza struck out last time he was at the plate, right? Yes, he did. Yeah, Hawes looking to repeat what happened last time. See, he throws a, I think it was on a curveball, if I'm not mistaken. Or actually, it was a fastball. He throws a curve in the dirt, mm -hmm. ball two. Actually, it was that fastball up, and Baez, it was swung and, swung and missed. And then that was the, I believe, the first and second double steal that mm -hmm. they did. Yeah. Ballard was able to get in there at third. Haas takes the time for Nunez. The pitch. Change up low. Full count now to Baeza. As Haas unable to finish him off. Let's see if he throws the fastball here. Just says here it is. Swing and a miss from Baeza again on that high fastball. 
Haas able to get another strikeout from today. It's going to be his fifth of the day. As Poland steps in. Poland struck out his first at bat. Hall's looking to do the same thing as he did to Baeza. Two at bats, two Ks. Ball in. 1 0. Yeah, Hall's really doing a great job at picking his spots in this inning. Because last, the last two innings you've seen, he fell behind a lot. Yeah. But now he's getting ahead, really Pulling just pitch, attacking strike. that strike zone. Yeah, exactly. Shut it off by Ezra with the first pitch strike. Got ahead of him, then worked it back to 3-2. and two. But, you know, Haas has got to stay aggressive. He's got to work with the stuff and keep ahead of these card heads. Hitters as Poland swings and misses inside fastball, strike two. Up and in, little chin music to Poland. Two and two. I mean, we're just seeing a heavy dose of fastballs. He's seems to be his favorite pitch so far today. And even then, I mean, I remember last outing he was just heavy dose of fastballs, and maybe that does get him into trouble sometimes. Poland takes called strike three, looking the outside part of the plate. Haas with his sixth strikeout of the day, back to back, looking to get three in the inning, strike out the side. Yeah, all Langer steps up. Yeah, I mean, fastball again. I mean, it's a favorite pitch. Yeah, it's what's working for him at the time, so just keep going with it. Exactly. Whatever's working, stay with it. Don't change anything. That was a curveball there for a ball low in the dirt. Yeah, he hasn't found it yet, but... When he does, then you might see him go fastball, change up, curveball, you yeah. know, just mix it up a little bit. Yeah, like you said, I mean, the curveball, it kind of looks, you know, floppy, I guess you could say, as Langer fouls it off of Nunes. Some part gives him a little bit of time. But, yeah, the, his curveball right now, I mean, it looks kind of like loopy. It doesn't have that nice tight break that it usually mm -hmm. does. But I feel like if he starts, you know, finding that pitch, get it just a little bit tighter, he'll be even more dominant than he has been so far today. See the rock counts dug out. Sunny afternoon, great day for baseball. So I'll deliver the pitch. Foul back from Langer, one and two. Yeah, I remember when we used to have the camera up on the stand behind home plate. Every time the foul balls would come back, I would have to flinch because we have a hole <laughs> right in the net. Yeah. So. Haas oh. hits Langer on the elbow. Looks like he's in a little bit of pain there. Maybe hit a nerve. Yeah, he's trying to shake it off, but that elbow. Oh, if you hit a nerve in the funny bone, oh, it's it's bad. It really does hurt. Yeah, it does. I remember one time in high school, I got hit and like right on the funny bone, and I couldn't feel my pinky <laughs> and my ring finger for at least a solid week. Oh, I remember pitching, too, and I was like, are my fingers there? <laughs> But as you see, Josh Ballard steps up for the Crawdads, looking to keep the inning alive here for the. It's Langer over there first. Haas able to escape trouble again. Not as much as he has been the first two. As he takes a sign from Nunes, sets the pitch up high. Yeah, and the previous two innings. 
he had two on with no outs, and this inning he has two outs with one on. So we see him really doing better than he did the previous two innings. Should be good today as Valley takes a strike in there from Hawes. Decent lead over there from Langer. Yeah, he doesn't look like he wants to steal. No, uh, I think the elbow might be in his head still bothering him. <laughs> he takes off. Yeah. Ha, ha steps off. Runs at him. Pridey there to tag him out. Great job right there from Haas. As we have Smith, Webster, and Pridey leading off for the Rock Hounds right after this. This is Max Smith. Thank you for watching the Solano College Sports Network. Leading off for the Rock Hounds now is number 14, Max Smith. Smith hitting the fielder's choice. Blast that bat. Takes a first pitch ball up. 1 0. Yeah, and with the Rock Hounds up 2 2 0. We know how once they get that rhythm going on offense, it seems like they never stop. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you have hitters as Smith takes a curveball in there, strike one. You know, a lot of, they have a lot of power hitters, mm -hmm. and once they go and get going, like you said, I mean, they I mean they could put up an eighteen run game, you know, eleven run game. I mean, we've seen it so far this summer. Smith takes a fastball away. Yeah, talking about their power hitters like St. Martin for one. We all know how he can hit. And then you have Broadband. He can also hit. Broadband's a big guy too. <laughs> and I think w when they play together, they bat like right after each other. So. Yeah, uh, usually I think it's like the 3-4 or 4-5 usually, yeah. I mean, and then you got center fielder Logan Finley. Smith fouls it back near the dugout. Allen drops it, unable to make the play. Difficult play. Just... Slipped right out of his glove there. Had to deal with the the chairs. The Rock Hound dug out. So Smith gets second life. Looking to get on here. Just a really difficult play for Allen. Yeah, very difficult. And with the sun in your eyes, I don't see how a lot of these catchers do what they do. It's really, really hard back there. Smith takes a fastball low and away. Two and two. Plus, you got to you know worry about throwing off your mask and just everything. Mm -hmm. Catchers don't get the credit they deserve. Yeah, it's a very underrated position. 
Smith able to get the walk. Third baseman, Garland Webster. Brings up Garland Webster. Hit by pitches first first time up. Yeah, and he also came in for a run. He was the first run, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Him and then Margio scored. He takes a fastball up. Strike one. Just hit the top of the zone, it looked like, from Gomez. As Smith's taking a pretty pretty good lead against the lefty. Webster again takes it. Strike two. Down 0-2. See what Gomez throws here. So far, he's just been attacking at these hitters. Webster fouls it back into the netting. Able to stay alive here. Gomez gets the sign from Allen. Looks over there at Smith. Delivers. Change up. Fisted off the end of the bat from Webster. Pulling. Decides to take it himself at first. Just gets one out. Smith moves over to second. First baseman, Jack Pridey. As that brings up Jack Pridey. Yeah, with Smith in scoring position and Jack Pridey up to bat. It's pretty. You have, as a pitcher, you have to really think about that because we know how Pridey can swing. And Max Smith. Very good bat. He could get there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you saw him drive that ball to right field, just got under it. His first at bat. He's got a lot of power. A lot of power and, you know, swings the bat for average, too. I mean, I want to say he hit above 400 this season for the Falcons. So, definitely a guy that has both, you know, big power and a big bat. His pride, he takes a curveball out. 2 0. Looks like they could pitch around Pridey here. Get to Vinny, set up the double play ball. Pridey pops it up. In the sun. Gomez. No one <laughs> able to make the catch. Allen looked like he lost it in the sun. Gomez looked like he overran it. And Poland just was kind of there just to be there. <laughs> yeah. The, the first thing you hear Allen say is, I can't see. Yeah. That's why you didn't see him move at all. Lost that right in the sun. Yeah. Might want to go to the the rare, you know, catcher wearing sunglasses move. I've seen that maybe a few times in the bigs at least, but. Gomez delivers again. Pridey fouls it right side. Pull him right out of the room. Pridey able to stay alive here. Yeah, with Pridey up to bat, it's always a good thing. Once he gets the first hit, then he just keeps going and going. And that's with a lot of these Rock Hound players. They get one hit, then two, three. Next they get that confidence rally. going, yeah. yeah. Especially with all these hitters that can hit on their team. I mean, it's a train. It's probably knocks it up the middle. Base hit. As Smith had a pause, making sure that it landed. Able to just move up to third. It's probably gets a nice single right up the middle. Yeah. Sets up first and third situation. Here from Margiotta. And you can hear Jack Pardee's grandmother cheering him on in the stands. It's so always good as a ball player. Yeah, it's always nice to have that support. Benny singled his first time up. Also scored the Rockhounds' second run. Wouldn't be shocked here if he laid out a bunt. Maybe did a little safety squeeze. So then he fouls it back into the netting. Allen looks like he's still having trouble with that sun. Anything fouled back, it doesn't look like he's going to corral it. And like you were saying, it would be pretty nice to see Margiela bunt the ball. 
I know when I first came to Solano and started broadcasting my first year, I seen a lot of that from a Stover coach team. Yeah, small ball. Mm -hmm. Loves to play it as Vinny takes a ball out. Yeah, it was and we saw that a lot even during the season too for the, for the Falcons. Played a lot of small ball, especially with close games too. Mm -hmm. Just Stover's type of way of playing baseball. Gomez takes a sign. Fastball up, two and one. Allen trying to calm him down, work out of this jam. Maybe get a double play ball to end the inning. You see Pridey taking a decent lead over there at first. Pitch, foul right side, out of play, two and two. How about Vinny, too? I mean, like we were saying, just a guy with a lot of hustle, you know, good heart. I mean, he swings the bat aggressively, too. I mean, just everything about him is just high energy, nonstop. Yeah, a great baseball player. Definitely a player that you can build around in your team. Mm -hmm. So, Pridey takes off. Why you swings and misses? Pridey able to get the stolen base. But two outs now, second and third, brings up LeBeau. Shortstop, Kenny LeBeau. See if LeBeau can get these two Rockhound players in. And Smith and Pretty. Lefty lefty matchup. Walked his last time up. Ball. Just missing the outside part of the plate. Yeah, and if LeBeau can bring both runners home, then that gives Carson an even bigger lead to really just stay relaxed as he's getting a lot of time relaxing right now. Exactly. To build that confidence is a little fouls it back. Yeah, get your mind focused, relax the body. That's what you need as a pitcher. Especially to build, you know, the more runs you have, the more you can work with your pitches. Mm -hmm. So if he's not feeling that, you know, like we, like, like we noticed, the curveball, it's not really as sharp. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can start throwing that more to get that pitch going too. Yeah. It's Gomez pitches. Lebo hits it at Langer, knocks it down, makes it throw over. Just gets him. Mm -hmm. Wow. Good, good composure right there from Langer and good throw. Actually, not good throw. Good play over <laughs> there from Poland. Good catch. <laughs> And uh, able to get his teammate out of the jam. Sets up the crawdads here at the top of the fourth. Josh Ballard steps up to play for the crowd as lead off the top of the fourth. I was looking for another scoreless sitting here. See what we can do. Ballard hit by pitch, stolen base. Played with Hawes last time he was on the base path as he swings and misses here. 0-1. If he gets on, and I wouldn't be surprised if he stole another base. Yeah, Allen. I mean, not Allen, but Ballard. Really shifty. He doesn't stop moving once he reaches base. Hoss throws it outside part of the play. Fastball, strike two. Ballard down 0-2. Still 2-0. Rockhounds. See if uh, Hoss throws in that curveball here. He mixed it in. I think it's a sign from Nunez. Pitch. Fastball up and in. Steady dose of fastballs today for these 
crawdad hitters from Hawes. Hawes gets the sign. The pitch. In there. Strike three. Catches Ballard looking. How about that? Seventh strikeout on the day for Hawes. As Jake Allen steps up. It's amazing that Hawes has seven strikeouts and he hasn't even gotten the curveball going. Yeah. He's doing all this with a fastball. It's pretty much with, I mean, we've seen maybe a few changeups, but, I mean, like you said, it's just been all fastballs and the crowd is still haven't been able to adjust. Allen takes the ball up and, up and away. Hawes takes the sign. Fastball just missed off the outside part of the plate. 2 0. And Hawes is really setting the pace of this game. You know, works kind of kind of on the slower side, if anything. Doesn't work quick as he, Allen takes a ball up. 3 0. Not really a, a quick, you know, pace setter. Yeah, you always want to take your time, though, when it comes to pitchers. Yeah. Because you you don't want to rush your pitch and it's out of control, and then next you know the ball is flying past your head. You know. I mean, it, it, it exactly. I mean, it all depends on the pitcher, too. You see a lot of pitchers, like Haas, just taking their time, you know, going with the flow. But there are some pitchers out there, as he walks Allen, mm -hmm. you know, that like to work quick, and they work mm -hmm. better when they work quick. So I mean, it's all. Left fielder, it's all I mean, how the pitcher wants to go about the game. As Simmons steps in. Looking over the third base coach taking the sign. One of Haas's strikeout victims on the day. <laughs> Saw sets. The pitch. Off the fist. And Simmons. Over to the third base coach. Haas able to get ahead. No one. Did you ever play baseball in uh, high school, Anthony? Um, not high school. I played it when I was younger, like Little, Little League, League baseball. Okay. Yeah, but I retired early. I retired? Yeah. On the cleats up? You could say that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oz throws it in there. Strike two. On and away. Simmons looking where that looking there where that was from the umpire. Don't think he necessarily agreed with the call. But nonetheless, <laughs> down 0 2. Yeah, I'll never w agree with the call with me getting strike out or strike out, <laughs> so I can understand. Fastball Ooh. just misses in the inside part of the play. Haas looks like he's a little shocked from that. Looks like he just caught the corner. Yeah, the ump even have to. He had to think about that one. It took him a quite a long time to yeah. call it. Kind of stood up there just for a little bit, just like whoa, that was <laughs> really a ball. As Allen takes a aggressively over there at first. Friday holds him on. The pitch. Foul back from Simmons into the netting. Staying alive. Still one and two. What position do you play when you play baseball? Um, I did a little bit of everything, honestly. Okay. You really one of the little utility players. Yeah, but okay. I I loved playing first or third base. Yep. The corner. Yeah. Best positions right there. <laughs> See Allen jumpy over there at first. Simmons fouls it back again, staying alive. Yeah, all you can do is stay alive at this point and hopefully, or I hope that Carson ends up walking you. But with the way Haas is pitching now, I don't see that happening. Yeah, Haas is in a rhythm now. 
steady pace of fastballs this at bat especially see if uh, he throws in that curveball here or even that changeup mm -hmm. to catch Simmons rolling over curveball in the dirt strikes out Simmons throw over to second safe and Allen out and able to move up on that curveball in the dirt good base running right there yeah, good throw by Nunez, but it was just like heads up play. Yeah, heads up play from Allen sets up a possible RBI situation here for Clifton, number nine hitter for the Crawdads. No one holding Allen over there a second. Carson delivers fastball, swing and miss, on one. Pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, every single hitter, if not majority, have been first pitch fastballs from Haas. Um, since the start of the third, yeah, pretty Swing. much. <laughs> <laughs> Swing and a miss again from a collected down 0-2. Not what you want, especially with Haas getting in a nice rhythm right now. Could be his ninth strikeout victim on the day. Yeah, And that's what I was talking about during the third inning, that when the first and second inning, he started – um, one zero or two zero. Now he's zero and two or zero and one, which really gives him a lot to work with. Exactly, get the confidence. You know, throw more pitches, and I mean, work with the stuff. I mean, from throwing the more pitches, you know, it gets you know fastball up right there. That was probably a set up pitch for maybe in the curveball in the dirt right here. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what Haas throws here. Marcia holds on Allen. The pitch. Hot strike three, swing and a miss from Collicton as he slams the bat aggressively on the ground. How about that? We'll have Fossilina Nunez and Hamza leading off right after this. Hi, this is Dominic Fossilina. Thanks for watching the Solano College Sports Network. Welcome back, everyone. It's Dominic Fossilina. Leads it off for the Rock Hounds here in the bottom half of the fourth. Good pitching performance from Gomez, too, so far for the Crawdads. But it's a pitcher's duel here. I like to see those rather than a high score game as Fossilina takes a strike one. Yeah, you always want to see close games because if it's a blowout or just high scoring, then you know, like, oh, the defense was lagging. But. If it's just low scoring, then you're like, okay, excellent defense, but better offense. Exactly. As Fossilina gets it past Collicton over there at second base, into right field for a nice leadoff single. Catcher Mickey Nunez. As Mickey Nunez steps up to the plate, had that nice RBI single with the center field his last time up, looking to do the same. 
Maybe start something up for the Rock Hounds here. Yeah, and once they start, then it's hard to stop them. Yeah. I mean, Haas has got a rhythm. I mean, you get a rhythm on the offensive side, too. It's it's going to be a long day for the Crawdads. This fastball away just gets in there. Strike one. Gets away from Allen. Looked like a fastball in the dirt. Fossilina able to get get up to second. Yeah, now you have Fossilina in scoring position with no outs. Now Nunez, I mean, going to drive him in, obviously, here. Move him over. Get a productive out. Walk. I mean, puts more pressure up on Gomez now that the runner is in scoring position. And especially with Hamza and St. Martin do up behind him. Not what you want. Hmm. Let's go, Miss Sets. Looks over. Fossilina delivers. Curveball low and away. Ball, ball two. Gomez gets the sign. Looks back. Delivers. Strike two to Nunez. Yeah, just catching the inside of the strike zone on that pitch. Nunez has the battle here. He sits two and two. Mm. It's Nunez in the back. So he takes his base. Don't think Gomez intended to do that. You have Hamza, St. Martin, and Smith behind them. Yeah, usually, Middle of the order, not what you want to do. Usually when somebody intentionally hits you, it's the first pitch. Yeah, so. first pitch, and it's usually you know right in the back. But, yeah. I mean, by waste five pitches right there, <laughs> and then hit him in the back. So, sets up first and second no out here for Willie Hamza. Switch hitter, about ready against the lefty today as he takes a fastball for a ball. Yeah, Hamza uh, reaching on his last, last at bat. He takes a swing and a miss. One and one. If I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure we haven't seen a pickoff move from Gomez today, which I'm kind of shocked. Him being the lefty as Hamza takes a ball, low the dirt, ball two. Yeah, Gomez hasn't thrown any. I think Hawes threw one or two. Um, I'm, Yeah, Hawes threw a couple, I want to say. At least, at least stepping off to keep the runner close. Yeah. But Gomez still haven't done that as he... Throws in a curveball inside part of the plate against Holmes at two and two. See the coaches for the Rockhounds chatting it up in the dugout. See if Holmes can do damage here. The pitch. Curveball up. Full count now. Has nowhere to put Holmes being St. Martin is up on deck and he has no outs this time so yeah. it's not like you can put him anywhere either mm. Hamza hits it at center field Ballard under it for an out nice line shot from Hamza but hit a nice I mean line drive to, to Ballard in center field easy out Sets up St. Martin here. First and second, one out. Yeah, St. Martin striking out on his last at bat. Looking for a bit of revenge now. Yeah, I think he was a little ticked off from that call, too, from the umpire. As he 
He takes another fastball inside, strike one. If you were to say Martin, too, I mean, going off the last at bat, you know, doing your studying, I guess you could say, in your head, their pitch sequence was hard in with the fastball and then low and away with the soft stuff. See those fastball in here. Just misses for ball one. Yeah, I think this time Gomez will attack the inside rather than going in, out, in, out. Yeah. Because, you know, St. Like, Martin. Yeah, it seems like St. Martin doesn't like the inside part of the plate. Yeah. Didn't take a swing last time up. So Allen sets up the inside part of the plate again. As Fossilina takes third. Oh. Aaron throw over there from Allen. <laughs> Fossilina able to get in for the Rockhounds third run of the day. As you see, Allen discussing with the umpire about maybe a batter's interference here on the throw. So the coach comes out, has a little chat. Looks like St. Martin might have gotten in his way. I mean, it's hard not for St. Martin to be in the way. Yeah, I mean, that's always <laughs> that's always the gray area. I mean, <laughs> it's a big, I mean, especially yeah. with him being so big. I mean, you really, as a catcher, especially for Allen, you got to step back or even, you know, step front. But, I mean, either way, it's just going to be a difficult play. He just made a bad throw over there. Third. St. Martin takes a ball out. Let's see what Gomez decides to throw at him here. Two and two the count. Fastball inside just misses. Yeah. Gomez thought he had the call there. Like you said, like when Gomez throws it to the inside for St. Martin, he never swings at it. I might go to the same spot, to be honest with you, even though if he does know it's coming. He hasn't swung at it yet. See what he can do. This does it look like a two seam, maybe a change up, mm. up and away as he walks St. Martin. Center fielder, Max Smith. It's Max Smith steps up. First and second. One out. Looking to add to this Rockhound lead. Max Smith, another power hitter, too, for the Rockhounds. As he fouls it back. Out of play here. The stands just misses a fan. Lucky. Yeah, and that's Pridey's grandma that it almost hit and during the Solano season she got hit in the arm. Really? Yes. Wow. So you gotta always pay attention. <laughs> Smith swings and misses on the breaking ball. Oh two. Good pitch right there from Gomez. Yeah, Smith is the type of person that he just gets the ball in play. I I really haven't seen him strike out this season at all, but he gets the ball in play, which is a good thing, and it starts rallies. Definitely. He fouls a nice line drive to right side. I mean, like you said, he always puts the ball in play. Never doesn't usually strike out, and that's... That's what you want from a hitter too. Make the defense play defense, and I mean sometimes they don't, and it leads to errors and runs for your team. As Gomez takes the sign, Smith fouls it back again. How to play? Staying alive here. Oh and two, still the count. Gomez looking in long for the sign. Curveball away. Gets away from Allen. Wild pitch. Sets up the runner second and third. And if Still one out. And if you're the Crawdads, you know that really hurts. That really hurts you as a team because now it brings 
St. Martin to second, and you have a runner on third, and you only have one out. It takes away from the double play. It takes away from the double play, and now they can possibly score two runs. Exactly. Looks like Allen's having a hard time behind the dish today as well. A couple pass balls, wild pitch. It looks like the Crawdads are willing to give up another run for an out. As the double play ball is out of play now. Let's go to the sets. Delivers. Fastball low. Three and two. Smith again working the count. Worked out of the three and two. Looking to get on here. Or do some damage. Let's go mess sets. Love pitch. Smith fouls it left side right over the rock hands dugout. Stays alive. You see our cameraman Javon with the shades on. <laughs> Gomez sets. The pitch. Swing and a miss from Smith. On a high fastball, Gomez is able to sit him down for the second out. Third baseman, Garland Webster. Sets up Webster here. See if Webster can get these two runs in here for the Rockhounds. Add a little insurance. Mm -hmm. Great job from Gomez right there against Smith. Shacking him out. Yeah, and he started 0-2, then that became 3-2, and he kept his composure to get the strike up. Webster fouls it. Foul. Oh, they're next to Stover, third base coach for the Rockhounds. Yeah, almost taking Nunez's ankles off. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they tell you to stay in foul territory. <laughs> oh, see, I never knew that. See? Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you're, I mean, if you're, third, if you're on third and you're on the line, you know, in fair territory, ball hits you, it's out. So that's why they always tell you to get back on that side. Gomez does a car ball out in the dirt. Ball one. Webster fouls it deep to the left side out of play into the trees. One and two now the count. Gomez looking to get out of trouble. Limit the damage. I know Webster wishes the wind was still blowing on that one. <laughs> yeah, wind's kind of died down just a little bit. So Allen sets up inside. Up and in. Two and two. Webster ready. Gomez ready. The pitch. Webster. Nice hit into left field. Gets down. Two runs will score. Webster heads on over to second. As he gets a nice two RBI double. Great hit right there from Webster. First base. Like, that's some real clutch hitting. With two outs, and you just bring home, bring home two runners. That's great hitting. Great clutch baseball right there from Webster. The coach for the Crawdads comes out as we have a pitching change. Good day from Gomez. You know he left some balls up. Got himself in a couple situations, but I think overall he did he did have pretty good stuff today. Yeah. Nothing he, to hang his head on. He did have some great stuff, but these hitters for the Rockhounds are just excellent. Chris Avagli here and Anthony Williams. As you're on Salon College Sports Network. And you can also watch Facebook. Solid College Sports Network, YouTube, Twitter, 
SCSN Sports, Snapchat SCSN Sports, and Instagram SCSN Sports. That, that's a tongue twister. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I remember when when I first joined the class and our professor he had to say, "Thanks for watching the SCSN Sports Network," and. It just took a couple of us so long to say it just because you're thinking about it. You're like, yes, yeah, it's, it's a lot of s <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now on the mound for the Crawdads, number 36, Spencer Johnson. So we have new pitcher, number 36, Spencer Johnson up there on the hill. Only has one inning of work so far this summer. Looking to get some more under his belt, get some work in. Uh, and as a relief pitcher, it's kind of hard to warm up with only 10 pitches. Yeah. Uh, it, I mean, it's hard for a relief pitcher sometimes because, I mean, you usually put in a situation to limit the damage and cut it off there. But sometimes, you know, it's hard. It really is. As he has Pridey coming up and Webster up on second. Yeah. And also you have to – you have 10 pitches and you have to work out – what three or four pitches mm -hmm. that you have? So, so yeah, you gotta find your rhythm quick. Mm -hmm. Find your stuff quick. See the crawdads bullpen. Yeah. It's gonna be interesting to see how Johnson tries to slow down these hitters for the Rockhounds with Jack Party coming up. That's not somebody you want to face. No, as not the first at all. Batter. Especially Pridey. But it does give him a good test too to see if he can get out of it. So Rockhounds are up five to nothing against the Crawdads. So Webster's on second after that two RBI double to left field. See if Pridey can add to it here. A little bit of insurance. Fastball down in the dirt. Ball one. And also, as a relief pitcher, you have to find your spots because, you know, not every batter has the same strike zone. Exactly. Uh, so. And Johnson being a tall, lanky guy up there mm -hmm. on the mound, he's really got to work on that downward fastball as he throws a fastball in there for a strike right past Pridey. One and one. That's the advantage a lot of these tall pitchers have too is that instead of having that flat fastball, especially with Johnson because he's so tall, has that downward bite to it at the angle that really kind of throws off hitters sometimes. Throws a fastball in the dirt here. Allen able to block that one. Definitely getting his work today behind the dish is Allen. Yeah, all catchers get... A lot of work done. Yeah. It's so hard. They it's squat not, the whole time. Not an easy job whatsoever. Pretty half swings. Fouls it to the right side. Over there, Coach Bobby. Pretty steps in two and two. Johnson looking to end the inning, limit the damage, and relief of Gomez. The pitch. Probably fouls it right side out of play. Yeah, Pridey hasn't been able to get things going today, so this at bat really, he really needs to just get a double or something to get him going. Get that confidence going. Cause Pridey can't hit. We all know that. <laughs> yeah, and I think every team knows that. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Pitch from Johnson. Ball. Low in the dirt. Sets up 3-2 count to Pridey. Margiotta on deck. Looking to get an opportunity to knock in Webster. If Pridey walks here. Johnson looks in. Sign from Allen. The pitch. Ground ball over there to Clickton. 
makes a nice play over there to first base, and that'll end the inning. Top of the order due up here for the Crawdads. Ballard, Skinner, and Baeza will be back right after this. This is Grant St. Martin. Thank you for watching the Solano College Sports Network. Welcome back, everyone. As John Ballard leads it off the credits here. One, two, three. Center fielder, John Ballard. As we have a new pitcher, Kirby Broadbent. Seven innings so far this summer. As a 90 RA, seven strikeouts. Looking to get some work in. Throws in, first pitch strike outside corner. Yeah, we know Broadbent for his power hitting. Hitting, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen him pitch, though. As Ballard, base hit up the middle off a of broad bent. Nice line drive. Able to maybe start something here for the Crawdads. Haven't really right fielder, ben gotten anything Skinner. going, especially against Haas. I mean, how about Haas's out too? Nine Ks, four innings. Yeah, Haas did an excellent job. The first two innings were kind of shaky, but he didn't give up any rounds. So you could say they are good innings, but the uh, third and the fourth, he just completely blew past the crawdads. Yep. That's Ben Skinner steps up to the plate. In there, strike one. Right side's open for Skinner. Maybe to look look for something outside part of the play to poke over there to the three four hole. Spot in throws in slider. Ball. One and one. Yeah, I know if I was Skinner right now against Broadband, I'd be pretty scared. Broadband's just a, another one of those just big guys. <laughs> so he hits it over to third. Webster. Throws over the first, just gets one out. It's probably gets off the back. Ballard able to move at the second. Yeah, he looked over at second, but realized it was too late. Yeah, soft ground ball. Webster made the smart play. Yeah. Throw it over the first, at least just get one out. As Baeza comes up. Baeza looking to do something other than strike out, as he did the past <laughs> two times against Haas. This problem delivers. Gets past Nunez. Let him move Ballard over to the third. Yeah, I know Baeza, he's glad Haas isn't on the mound now. Yeah. 
definitely looking, you know, for a change of scenery. Probably had a sigh of relief. I mean, but even then, broadband it just looks intimidating up there. <laughs> Especially with that mustache going. <laughs> broadband sets. Baez pops it up to left field. Lebo having trouble. Fossilina throws it in. Webster able to cut it off. Great job right there all around from the Rockhounds. Great defense by the Rockhounds, but that also comes with great coaching. As we know, all Stover, starts with it. Exactly. Stover is a great coach. So that'll bring up Poland. Here with two outs. Ballard at third. Looking to at least get the crowd heads up on the board. That's again Poland. Probably happy that Haas isn't in the game. <laughs> As he struck out twice. Broadbent throws a slider inside, just misses. 1 0. Yeah, I think all the batters are glad Haas isn't in the game. Yeah, they all <laughs> struggled. I mean, I think there was what? One hit? Yeah, one hit, and that was uh, John Ballard. Leadoff hitter. Mm -hmm. Bobman throws a slider again in the dirt. 2 0. Bobman sets. The pitch. Slider fouled from Poland. Able to get a piece. 2 and 1. You know, the, the helmet. Poland's way right now. You ever seen the Jetsons? No. Oh, you haven't. Mm. Ooh, I was gonna say he looks like Gazoo, but <laughs> probably delivers. Fastball low, three and one. Yeah, you really, you really never seen the Jetsons? It's an old show. It's, it's been so. Oh man, Anthony, you're killing me. <laughs> I've been in there, strike it's two. So, um. Did they have a robot? Yes, that okay. was the one. I, I think I know where that, <laughs> that was the one. Yeah. And then Gazoo is the, the green. The little, okay. Yeah, the little green little guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen that show in like 10 years. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's been years for me too. <laughs> it's pulling. Able to stay alive there off the hands. Three and two still the count. You know, if I was broadband up there on the mound, I'd use that intimidating body structure and the mustache and just scare Poland as he strikes Ooh. him out. Curveball looking. Oh. Poland did not agree with that call. So we'll have bottom of the fifth right after this. I'm Kenny LeBeau. Thank you for watching Salon College Sports Network. everyone as Vinny Margiela leads it off for the right hand seat on the bottom of the fifth. Spencer Johnson still your pitcher for the crowdouts. Looking to get a 1-2-3 inning. He delivers. Fouls it in Margiela. 
Oh, one the count. Not wasting any time in Margiotta. Aggressive hitter. Always looks for that fastball and just drives it somewhere. Johnson throws fastball low. Ball one. Yeah, Margiotta, I know after a last at-bat, he's looking to really redeem himself and get on base. Yeah, he had that strikeout against Gomez last at-bat. As he fouls it off his ankle. Ooh, that looked painful right there. Yeah, and the way he hopped up, you know he's feeling it. Yeah, he's doing a little limp right there, a little gimp. Feels it, that's for sure. And honestly, I mean, as a pitcher, that's when you throw the same pitch. <laughs> you throw the same pitch, low and inside. Because you know he's going to be afraid to do that again. Mm -hmm. Argia steps back in. One and two the count. Johnson sets. The pitch. Benny able to stay alive. He right, was going to be in the dirt. Somehow got a piece of that. Good job right there. Yeah, now that I think about it, that same play happened during the Giants game. But, like, it just stayed, like, right in front of home plate. And the batter thought it was a foul. But it was actually in play, and the catcher just grabbed it, tagged him. And <laughs> everybody was like, what happened? He was trying to play it off. Probably that it hit him. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. As it gets a piece of Margiota, everyone kind of looked confused. Yeah, maybe it touched a, a arm hair or something. Yeah, that know. looked like it touched me. <laughs> so I don't even know. Wow. As Margiota takes first base, sets up LeBeau here. Spinny so takes a good. Aggressively over there at first. Johnson delivers. First pitch strike. Fastball. I don't believe Margiotta was, was still with his ankle bothering him, though. No, I, I think that kind of put it out of the mm -hmm. out of the question. But he does look, you know, a little jumpy over there. He's got that hand going right there. That hand out, wiggling. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. As Johnson delivers. LeBeau fouls it back. Left side. Out of play. 0-2. Pretty aggressively over there from Vinny. That ankle being ailed. As Johnson sets. Delivers curveball low. Ball one. It's a good miss right there. Yeah, a lot of people think you always have to throw near the strike zone, but sometimes if you could just get them chasing the ball, that is a great pitch. Exactly. I mean, it's always good to, you know, sometimes, depending on how the game's going. As Johnson strikes out LeBeau looking inside part of the plate. It's always good, you know, as a pitcher, Left fielder. you know, to work with your Dominic stuff. Costalina. So it's okay, you know, once in a while to, you know, make a, a wasted pitch, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. That's why you see sometimes, like, that high fastball on an 0-2 count. Mm -hmm. Then they'll go back with the breaking ball or they'll go curveball in the dirt up high, you know, a bunch of different ways. As Fossilina steps in, calls time. We're going to get his feeding comfortable up there at the plate. Big lead over there at first. The pitch. Swing and a miss from Fossilina, 0 and 1. Yeah, Johnson making sure Margie Oda doesn't steal. There goes Margie Oda. There he goes. <laughs> Throw from Allen, high. Margie steals it with ease, makes it in the second. Sets up an RBI opportunity here for Fossilina. 
see if you can get him in. Yeah, that's a tough kid after getting his hurt right in the ankle, ankle and yeah. able to seal base that cleanly. Oof. Can't ask for much more, that's for sure. Johnson gets a sign from Allen. Looks over to Margiotta. Delivers. Possibly the Fowler right side. Just over the fence out of play. Fossilini too, I mean, just based on what I've seen from him so far this summer, he's another one of those just grinders. You know, high energy, swings the bat extremely well. Just another one of those spark plugs for the team. She fouls it off again, right side. Yeah, like you said, spark players, they're always nice to have. Like, thinking back to any sport, like, Basketball, you have the six men, somebody to come off the bench, really mm -hmm. spark your team. Exactly. Um, football is mainly like running backs, like Darren Sproles. You know, somebody to just get things just going. Just a little for spark you. plug, yeah. So to get something going, get that team, you know, hyped up. As Johnson delivers to Fossilina, Fossilina fouls it off his ankle. Comes another victim of that ball into the ankle. But I mean, yeah, that spark plug. I mean, you saw what happened with the the Royals, I believe. It was the, I don't know if it was the year they won the World Series or when they lost in 14 against the Giants, but uh, Draw Dyson, you know, just on the base path, mm -hmm. stealing bases and everything, really set that tone for the Royals. This possibly steps in here, still 1 and 2. The pitch. Pops it up, left side. Under it is Whitaker. As he just came in this past half inning, I believe. It will corral that good under it for the second out of the inning. Catcher, Mickey Nunez. And Nunez having a, a good game. At first, he, he struggled defensively, but ever since then, he's really gotten his stuff together. Yeah, I think, you know, having that success at the, at the plate definitely helped him behind the dish and get that confidence back. Mm -hmm. He takes a fastball in and a little bit low. Ball one. And was it Nunes that got hurt that one day when? You know, oh, when he, yep. The, yeah. <laughs> he got hit right in the protective cup area. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He was down on the ground for about like 10, 15 minutes. Oh, it was a good minutes. solid 10 minutes at least. <laughs> he takes a ball out. That was, uh, that was something else. I've never seen someone stay down for that long. <laughs> that must have hit him directly there, too. <laughs> yeah. Can't imagine that pain. Don't want to feel that pain, either. Not whatsoever. Johnson delivers here. Fastball strike on the outside corner, 2-1. and See if Nunez can get another... RBI single and drive in Vinny like he did in the second. Nunez fouls it left side just next to the line. Foul ball. For some reason, I thought that was going to be out of play at the start of the bat, but <laughs> silly me, right? <laughs> It's okay, we all make mistakes. <laughs> As Johnson gathers himself up there on the mound. Looks a little tired up there. Steps up. Guess he signed from Allen. Sets. The pitch. Curveball low in the dirt. Margiela not going on that. Nunez takes it two. Three and two full count. And I think Johnson's going to go low with this pitch. Possibly make him chase after it or just 
make him think about swinging. Yeah. Definitely, I'd like to see that fastball in right here to Nunes. He does a curveball low in the dirt, and it looks like it got a piece of his foot. As he gimps a little bit. Either way, he would have been at first, even if it didn't hit him. There's full count. DH, Willie Hamza. But nonetheless, Nunes takes it over to first as he limps a little bit. Looks like he needs a little bit of time. Loosen that up. Hamza up there at the plate now. First and second. Two out. If these Rock Island players keep getting hit in the foot, then they're all going to need some. Need yeah, I mean, it's the, it's the feet. <laughs> it's really, I don't know if it's a strategy the crawdads do or what. <laughs> That's a tough strategy. Ball low, 1 0. Justin looks over at Margiotta, delivers, ball out, strike one, take that back. Hamza has got pretty few good swings today in his first couple at-bats, looking to put these in play and not have him hit to anyone. Takes a fastball in there, ball two. We're still waiting for that, you know, rally factory rockhounds type rally. You know, yeah, We're something to break open the game. Yeah, get something going. He takes a fastball out, three and one. Johnson doesn't want to, you know, put himself in a situation like Gomez did. Hmm. In the second inning, put Hamza on from a walk and have St. Martin up two on or bases juiced, two outs. Hamza here can be selective. Look for his pitch, his pitch only. Johnson delivers. Strike in there, inside part. Three and two, that'll start the runners. Be interesting what Johnson throws here. I don't, I don't think he'll throw a three two breaking ball again. I thought he'd come out after him with a fastball. As runners go. Pitch from Johnson. Hamza not able to hold up. Strike three it is. Interesting call right there, to say the least. But Crawdads up next half inning. Poland, Langer, Ballard. We'll be back right after this. If you have an interest in a career in sports broadcasting, whether it's behind the scenes or on camera, then this is the class for you. Class is held every Wednesday from 1.30 to 4.30 in room 121 alongside the library building. For more information, contact Greg Poff, that's me, at Solano.edu. We hope to see you here next semester. And remember, it's more than just sports. It's an education. Welcome back, everyone, as Kevin Whitaker takes his first A-B of the day. He fouls it back, first pitch, on one. Took over at first base for Langer. Yeah, and 
I've been still on the mound. I know he got a, a nice rest with a batting front of Rocket House. Swedeker hits the right side. Trouble over there. No one <laughs> able to get under it as it hits the Bermuda Triangle over there in right field. Whitaker able to get another shot here, but now he's down 0 2. Yeah, Broadbent, I mean, he just got a little bit more confidence, I think. Robin looking to finish off Whitaker here. Winds up the pitch. Curveball just misses Whitaker. Ball one. If I'm a batter, I don't think I could dodge any pitch really. No. Unless, unless it's coming from my head, then yeah, but. I mean, they usually teach you as Whitaker swings and misses. Ball and dirt. Just gets him over there. It looks like Frazier behind the dish now for the Rock Hounds. Just able to get him. Good play. Short no, that's what they teach you, though. And base, I mean, when the ball's coming after, especially, like, they don't start teaching that until, I don't know, like, 13, 14. But they usually teach you turn in, tuck elbows in, tuck the bat. See, I didn't make it that far. <laughs> <laughs> I retired at 10, I think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ballard takes it strike one so you say retired they have uh, your jersey up in the the Little League Hall of Fame or somewhere or what it'll be there soon, soon? you know they okay. haven't gotten to me yet it's usually like what five years after <laughs> <laughs> it's taking longer you know there's players in the from the 60s that are just now getting inducted so I'm gonna be one of those guys I'll be in there though there you go it's probably up in the zone against Ballard. Three and one. <laughs> Broadbent under his glove. Base hit up the middle for Ballard. This takes a big turn over that first base. Catcher Jake Allen. Sets up Jake Allen now. Looked like the play yesterday. I don't know if you – or you were at the Giants game, obviously. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if you saw Cueto when it right, went right under his glove. He kind of like – he he went to throw the pitch, mm -hmm. got under it, or, you know, set his feet, but then like turned around again and like it went under his glove, but then it went to, right to Crawford for an easy out. But Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Cueto. Salmon takes the ball. He's nice. He just struggled the he, first couple of innings. Yeah, he's a – he's. I don't know. I mean, I feel like with Cueto, with the Giants, I think I think they're going to move him before the trade deadline. As Allen hits it over to LeBeau. LeBeau unable to make the play. Ball goes out in center field. Ballard going to third. As it will be first and third, one out, with Simmons up at the plate now. Yeah, that ball – to LeBeau, it took an awkward bounce, and that's what caused him to miss it. Sets up Simmons now. Robin delivers. Fastball in. Ball one. See if the Cardex can at least get a run up here on the board. Probably their best shot this afternoon. Does in. Fastball. Strike one. I've noticed that Stover, he likes to give everybody a. Well, not everybody, but a lot of people are opportunity to pitch. Yeah. Like a couple of games we've seen, Kenny Quintilla, he pitched. So. Just a bunch of, I mean, we saw St. Martin pitch the other day, too. I mean, oh, St. Yeah. Martin's not really a pitcher either. 
And, you know, like you said, I mean, he just likes working with kids. I mean, it is summer ball, though, mm -hmm. so you can't do that. It's not necessarily about the wins losses. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's just developing young players. Mm hmm It's probably throws a slider in the dirt there. Sims looked like he was about to go for it, but held up. Two and two the count. Robin sets the pitch. Simmons fouls it left side. It's a missile over there. We're next to the coach. Able to stay alive. See if he can do some damage here against the Rockhounds. Get something going for the Crawdads. Yeah. They definitely need a rally here in this inning. Ball and dirt. There goes Allen. Ballard goes home. Easy out for the Rockhounds. Great heads up baseball. Can't ask for much more. How about that? Ballard thought he was going to get an easy run in, but. Yeah, do they still allow, like, people to run into the catcher? Um, No, they try to stay away from that okay. now. I mean, especially in the bigs, too. Yeah. I think ever since that uh, Buster Posey yeah. play. That's what I was thinking about. Ed, they've been really strict on that. And now it's like you can't you can't block the plate unless you have the ball with you. So that's mm -hmm. why you see a lot of catchers out in front of the plate now. Especially. It's probably throws another slider in the dirt. Gets away. I'll move Allen up to third. Simmons takes first on the walk. So we have pinch hitter, pinch hitter Connor Casperson up, taking place for Clickton. Casperson grounds to the second of Margiotta. Margiotta throws over to Priety, makes the play. Rockhounds out of the inning, no damage done. I'll lead up the Rock Hounds in the bottom of the six right after this. This is Jack Friday. Thank you for watching the Solano College Sports Network.
Sam Martin steps up to play to lead off for the Crawdads here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. So we have a new pitcher here for the Crawdads, number 22, Max Gray. Three innings this season, summer season, I should say, thus far. So looking to get some work in, just like Johnson did. First pitch curveball up, ball one. St. Martin kind of shocked on that one. And I think St. Martin won't be getting the same inside looks that he was getting before with Gomez. Ooh. If, if it is an inside <laughs> look, it's a foul. I mean, not a foul, but a ball. But yeah, try to push him off the plate. Mm -hmm. Maybe work that outside corner here now. See what Gray can do here. St. Martin mm. swing and a miss. Healthy cut. 2 and 1. Yeah, he was trying to kill that one. Oh, he was, that def one he was definitely trying to leave the yard on that one. <laughs> the wind's blowing right now. Perfect. <laughs> Man. It's great digs in his glove. The pitch. St. Martin swing and a miss again. 2 and 2. Yeah, he's too focused on trying to kill the ball instead of just getting it into the playing field. Yep, and this is where, I mean, Gray should throw the curveball. Get him off his, just like that. Strike three, look mm. in to St. Martin. St. Martin does not agree with the call. As Gray gets his first strike out of the day. Center fielder, Max Smith. Max Smith steps up, one out here. A good pitch right there from Gray. Good bite to that breaking ball. Over two, we'll walking a K here for Smith as he flies it out to left. Under it, Simmons wow, drops the dropping. ball. Wow, how about that? Hey. Just decides to Cadillac, uh, Cadillac it out there in left field. Hits right off his glove, and Smith able to Third move up to second on that error. Hmm. Simmons, wow. Can't take your eye off the ball. Well, that sets up Webster here. Smith on second now. One out. Looking to get an insurance run here. Double hit by pitch. In that two RBI double. Two. It's gray sets. The pitch. Webster hits it off. Sounded like a broken bat. Whitaker corrals it. It's the throw over to the first to pull in. Sounded like. Webster broke his bat on that one. Oh, and there goes a crack as Allen throws it over. <laughs> First baseman. More damage to it. Sets up Pridey here. Two outs now. Looking to get that runner and Smith in. It's gray sets. Probably fouls it back right side and out of play. Yeah, Party still looking to get things going. Yeah, only has that one single. Got it at the second, his last at bat. So he fouls it off again, right side out of play. Down 0 2. See our cameraman Colton <laughs> in the zone. <laughs> Great. Rose curveball. Probably hits it up the middle. Shortstop. Over there to make the play. He is out. How about that? Great play over there from Ballard. Crowd is able to escape the inning. No runs here. We'll come back on the top of the seventh right after this.
Welcome back, everyone. As John Ballard steps up to lead off the crawdads here at the top of the seventh inning. New pitcher on the mound, Daniel Page. Looking to get some work under his belt, as well as everyone else here. Page sets the pitch in there. Strike one. As you can see, Ballard, two for two, two singles, two stolen bases. This kid is a monster. As he pops it up the center, under it is Smith. Makes the play, one out. Yeah, how about the Ballard brothers today, though? Seem to be the little spark plugs for the crawdads. Mm -hmm. Jumping around the bases and everything. <laughs> As Skinner is up now. 0 for 2 today with a walk. Swing and a miss from Skinner. Oh, one. Page is working quick here. Delivers. Curveball. Swing and a miss from Skinner. Again, 0 oh, and 2. Yeah, like what we were talking about earlier, how some pitchers like Hawes likes to take his time and really focus on what he's doing. Page is really just gunning it out there. Back to back to back as he does a curveball in the dirt here. Ball one. Yeah, he's not giving the batter any time to relax. He wants the batter on his toes at all times. I, I mean, me personally, I prefer someone who works quick rather than take their time as Page does. And fastball caught looking at Skinner. <laughs> That'll sit him down for out number two as Baeza steps up. DH, Alex Baeza. is a 0 for 3 today. 2Ks and a fly out to left. Let's see if you can get something started off the page here. Fastball in there, strike one. Yeah, by Aza, he struck out twice against Hawes, and I think he flew out against Broadbent. Mm -hmm. So. Looking off the fist over there to Pridey at first. Pridey takes it himself. Easy one, two, three inning here for Page. That sets up the Rock Hounds. And Margiota, LeBeau, and Fossilina will be back right after this. I'm Daniel Page, and thank you for watching the Solano College Sports Network. Welcome back, everyone, as Vinny Margia steps up to lead off this bottom half of the seventh inning here. A little meeting up there on the mound for the Crawdads. New pitcher, Jordan Chapel, 12 innings under his belt with a 2-2-5 ERA. So definitely one of the 
better pitches here for the Crawdads. It's a little interesting meeting from Allen and Whitaker to start off, but here we go. The pitch. Swing and a miss from Argio to 0 1. Wasting no time in Chapel. Right back up there on the mound. Delivers. Fouls it back and Margiota out of play 0 oh 2. Yeah, Margiota trying to figure out how to deal with this quick pitching. As you can see, so as soon as Margiota steps up, he's coming he's, out with the Yeah, pitch. he's right. He's <laughs> going right back at him. Mojo pops it up towards right center. Looks like Ballard's under there to make the catch for out number one. That'll bring up LeBeau. Shortstop, Kenny LeBeau. Yeah, LeBeau, he bobbled that, that grounder a couple of innings ago. Looking to get some revenge with the bat. <laughs> so he hits it to center field. The other Ballard brother right there to make the catch. Nice line shot from LeBeau, but found Ballard for out number two. Yeah, and that ground ball. That was, uh, I feel like on that one, he kind of stepped back and kind of like Dominic ate him up. Fossilina. I feel like he should have attacked that one. But Fossilina up here, two out. Chapel looking for a nice, easy one, two, three inning. See if we can do that. Yeah, I, I don't think the Crawdads have had a one, two, three inning for a while. No, I don't think on the day. No, they haven't had one yet. So Chapel looking to do that here. See those first pitch strike. Fastball out, one and one. Fossilina drives it to the center field. Ballard able to get under it, makes the play. Easy one, two, three inning for Chapel. And that'll bring up Paulin, Langer, and Ballard here. So Carl is in the top of the eighth. This is Kurt Robert. Thanks for watching. Solana College Sports Network. Back everyone. Matt As number 24, Matt Poland steps up to lead off the top half of the eighth for the Crawdads. Page still up there on the mound. Poland looking to get something going as he's over three with three Ks. Page throws in a curveball, misses one and zero. Fastball low, 2 and 0. I think I just found a player comparison for Poland. Based on batting stance, mm -hmm. he reminds me of a uh, Josh Donaldson. Josh Donaldson. Blue Jays, third baseman. Okay, yeah, I know what you're talking about. 
Swing and a miss from Poland. Two and one. See, I'm trying to think of who had the weirdest batting stance. Ooh. Council had that ugly one. That lefty <laughs> up in the air. As Poland pops it up left side. It looks like we have uh, Sandry over there at shortstop now. Took over for LeBeau for out number one. That'll bring up Whitaker here. Third baseman, Kevin Whitaker. And another one I thought was ugly just because he was the way he was tilted. And he, I mean, he, I mean, he was cool. You know, he was a decent player, but Marquise Grissom, I don't know if you remember him. Nah. He was like towards, like, literally his entire body. Like, it was almost his back showing. <laughs> and it was like he was pointed towards right field the entire time. Wow. I don't know. It just didn't look right to me. <laughs> this page in there for a strike. Yeah, I remember when I played Little League, my coach, he tried to get me to bat right-handed right because I throw my right hand, but I just felt so comfortable on my left side. Mm -hmm. So they were trying to fix it, but it never happened. And then... When I got older, I actually turned into a switch hitter. Really? Wow. How about that? <laughs> so Whitaker drives it to right field. It looks like St. Martin out there in right, able to come down with the catch. But nice piece over there from Whitaker just found St. Martin. Josh That'll bring up Josh Ballard here with two out. Ballard, he, both Ballard brothers, they've had great games today. This page throws in first pitch strike inside part of the plate. Yeah, both, I think, both the brothers are having the best game for the crowd that's thus far. This page gets a slider away from him. One on one. Yeah, I'm kind of mad we haven't seen a home run yet. Yeah, I mean, it's shockingly with the wind, too, and everything. It's been a pretty quick game. This page deals fastball up 2-1. and one. Page sets. The pitch. Inside, 3-1. Yeah, and with both pitchers moving at a fast pace, these next two innings should be going yeah, by pretty, pretty quick. quick. <laughs> in the game in the reasonable time. Page. Ballard hits the short. DeSandri tries to make a Derek Jeter type best play. Pridey <laughs> stops the ball with his bare hand. Yeah, with his bare hand. How about hand. that? <laughs> Not even using his glove. He just said, no, nah, I'll just use my regular hand. <laughs> Saves a a base. That'll go as a hit Catcher. Yeah. for Ballard. And I don't think anybody could really make that Derek Jeter play. Oh, no. you got to have an yeah. absolute cannon. Yeah. <laughs> or just you see, Derek Sandry Jeter. just throws it. And Pridey just a great job of just kind of using Ballard as a, as a prop to prop him up <laughs> and stop that ball. His bare hand. His page throws in there. First pitch strike. Page wasting no time getting ahead of these hitters. Allen looking to get something going for the Crawdads. So takes the ball up and away. One and one. Yeah. Page being aggressive going forward with these batters. Like you say, he's getting ahead almost every time a new batter steps up. This page throws on over to Pridey. Keep Ballard close. Page sets. Delivers. Looks like a changeup. Allen pops it up out there to left. Fossilina under it. Able to make the catch. That'll bring up the bottom of the order here for the Rock Hounds in the bottom of the eighth. 
and thank you for watching the Sloan College Sports Network. Welcome back, everyone. We have Brant Frazier leading off for the Rock Hounds here in the bottom half of the leading eighth. Off catcher Brant Frazier took over for Mickey Nunes behind the dish. As we're ready, ball low, one and zero. Frazier hits it left field. Foul. Right beside him. One on one to count. Chapel wasting no time up there on the mound again. Quick work. Does a strike in there. One and two. Look like almost uh, a little movement on there, like a cutter. Something. Throws it low in the dirt. Two and two. Yeah, and you're you're not getting any time to really just go through the motions if you're a batter. So Frazier pops it up, Allen under it. Able to make the play. How about that? Nice little slide and catch. Yeah, Sets earlier down Frazier. Earlier he couldn't see the ball. But now, yeah, I think the, the, the sun's kind of moved out a little bit. More to work with with the sky. But that sets up Kenny Quilleton here for his first AB on the day. Pinch hitting for Hamza. Yeah, Kenny had a good year here at Solano. Takes a ball there. Yeah, he was uh, Solano's DH for most of the season. Mm -hmm. Had a pretty good year. Good power numbers. I think he had like four or five home runs. So he fouls it back. Yeah, him and Coach Stover have a, a great relationship. So he takes a front door slider in there one and two that's what you want as a player that makes you more, feel more comfortable you know playing and everything like that as he lines it in the center drops right in front of Ballard for a base hit kind of just slapped at it right there and able to get a nice a single out of it that brings up St. Martin here have you ever had a coach you didn't like um Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I had one. It was my freshman year. His name was uh, Mike Moon. And uh, St. Martin takes a curveball in there, strike one. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, he um, he was something else. He was really hard on us, you know, freshman. Mm -hmm. And I remember we had this batting cage, and it was like uh, a, a shorter length one. Mm -hmm. St. Martin swings and misses right here, 0-2. 
it was a shorter cage one and so there was one time where he would literally just you know throw just as hard as he could and there were kids getting hit in the head and he'd be like he'd just say no get back up in there oh. and so we would have like no time to swing and it'd just be terrible St. Martin floats it into center field in front of Ballard for another base hit first and second one out here for Max Smith but yeah I mean we were literally up there and I kid center you not it was probably like maybe maybe 50 10, 15 feet, not even. Mm. Probably not wow. even. Not even that. Actually, it was about 10 feet. And uh, he was just gassing him. And I remember I got hit in the head, too. And he was like, no, get back in there. And I was like, wow, alrighty. Smith takes the ball here. But yeah, just terrible coach. He didn't really know what he was talking about. <laughs> I see. <laughs> takes a fastball up and away for a strike. Questionable call there. One and one. Smith hits it into the right center. That'll fall down. Kenny will score. Here comes St. Martin. Play at the plate. St. Martin is in there safe. What happened? Great piece of hitting right there from Max Smith with a nice two RBI double. Third it looks like the umpire got in the way of St. Martin as he was running third. Okay. Yeah, because I've seen St. Martin look back. He kind of threw up his hands like, what What the heck? Yeah. That'll bring up Garland Webster here. Looking to add to this 7 to nothing lead. Fastball in, 1-0. Yeah, and this is what I was talking about earlier. When the Rockhounds rally, it's pretty It much just keeps over. going. Yeah. Everyone gets a little piece of it. Takes the ball up, 2-0. Chapel sets, the pitch. Webster swing and a miss. Big cut. Two and one. Guess the sign. Webster hits it right center. Able to make the catch. It's Skinner out there in right. Throws it in. Smith able to move up to third on that. Productive out for Webster. That'll bring up Jack Friday here with two out. Jack Friday. See if Pridey can bring in this one. Swing and a miss on a fastball in the dirt. Smith not going on that as the ball gets away from Allen. Allen's still getting his, his work done behind the plate. You don't see that too often though. Fastball in the dirt, someone swings and misses on that. Usually that's an easy, easy take. Friday hits it a third over there to Whitaker. Whitaker gets under it. Makes the throw over to Pullen. Easy out. Smith unable to score on that. But that'll bring up Allen Simmons and Clickton here in the bottom, the top of the ninth. Hi, I'm Coach Bobby. Thanks for watching the Solano College Sports Network.
back everyone as we're here in the top of the ninth here with Simmons leading off for the Crawdads. Paige in here to finish off the business here for the Rockhounds. Looking to get an easy 1-2-3 inning again. Delivers. Fastball away. 1-0. Skinner hasn't had the best day during this game. I think he went 0 and 2 in his first at bat, and then just couldn't get things going. Exactly. It's hard to, especially when you know the rest of your team isn't really producing anything either. It's sometimes hard for a player to do that by himself because he feeds off your teammates as Simmons takes the strike here inside part of the plate, two and one. But yeah, it's, I mean, it's difficult, especially when your team is just not having a good day overall. And it's hard for you know, sometimes a player to get going by himself. This page does a fastball in, just missed, 3 and 1. And that's why getting runs is so important for a pitcher, too, because it gives them that, that chance to just relax and just not overthink about trying to put the team on their back. Exactly. Gives them a little bit of wiggle room. Work with their stuff as Simmons takes his walk. That will bring up Casperson. So excuse me for that mishap. Last half inning. As Casperson gets his second AB of the day. Pitch sets the pitch. Inside. Hits Casperson. Looks like it grazed him on the leg. That'll put him on. First and second. No outs. It looks like we got a pinch hitter here. Pinch hitting. Number 26. Grant Chapman. Looks like number 26. Grant Chapman. Getting an at bat today. And if you're pitching right now, you don't want the crawdads to rally at any time especially if the last any you know exactly i mean i mean even though you do have a seven nothing in the lead you don't want to give them that that energy to feed off of mm -hmm. to get them back into this game that's ch because baseball is a sport where anything can happen exactly anything Chapman hits it back to Page. Page hits off his glove. Able to keep his composure. Make the play to get out Chapman at first. Nice play over there by Pridey too. Making that catch. Yeah, that's what you call concentration by Pridey. Great job of concentration and composure from both sides. Hit off Page's glove. Heel of his glove made a off-balance throw over to Pridey. And Pridey able to come down with it for at least one out. Josh. Got a mound visit here from Stover. See if it makes a call to the bullpen. Look how big Stover is compared yeah, to yeah, Stover is just I mean we were talking about St. Martin and probably about being a big guy. Look at Stover. Yeah, yeah, he's so intimidating, like Oh he's intimidating. That is number one thing. Like when he talks to you, you're just like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Had that soft settle, just kinda scared of him. Yeah. <laughs> But it looks like Stover's letting Pace try to finish this one out. See if he does. As we have a pinch hitter here, Joshua Nelson. In for Skinner. It's Page. First pitch strike inside part of the plate. Oh, and one. Yeah, coming out aggressive with this at bat. Great block from Frazier right there. Keep the ball in front of him. Keep it rough for scoring. So it goes to one on one. Page sets. The pitch. In the dirt. Ball two. 
See if Paige can work out of this trouble. Keep this shut out for the rock hounds. <laughs> Fastball low. Three and one the count. Wouldn't be too bad here if he did it. Walking Nelson sets up a double play ball, and that way they can maybe get out of, out of the inning and end the game with the double play. Yeah, that's always nice, but sometimes you just want to get the batter out. <laughs> As Nelson takes the walk, that'll load up the bases here for Baeza. DH, Alex Baeza. Baeza up for his fifth at bat today. 0 for 4. But he's having some pretty good swings. Mm -hmm. Just Just missing him, though. He just got under that one to left field in the fifth inning. He got you know, fastball in on the hands it's for uh, last at bat. So he takes a fastball low and inside for a strike on one. Yeah, his last two at bats, he flew out. So he's making contact with the ball. And I think the second at bat, he, even though he struck out to Hawes, I think he had a good battle with Yeah, I think him. he had a really good at bat, too. I mean, Hostum just overpowering fastballs up in the zone mm -hmm. as Baeza just took a cur backdoor curveball in there for strike two on two. See if Paige can end the game here. The pitch. Ground ball to shortstop to Sandry. Flips it over Margiota, and Margiota just throws it on over to first. Double play. How about that? Rock counts come out with a 7 to nothing victory. Well fought game today from both sides. Rockhounds came on on top. What do you think of the game today, Anthony? Great offense by the Rockhounds. The offense is what really, really helped them. They got the runs to give Hawes and the rest of the pitchers some comfortability to really just show what they're worth. Got them to just not overthink about things. And Hawes, tremendous job. The first two innings. He was kind of shaky, but they were still good innings because the Crawdads didn't score. And then the next two, he was just lights out. Yep, I entirely agree with you. Rockhounds come out on top again, 7 to nothing. Chris Evagri here again, along with my partner Anthony Williams, here on Slaw College Sports Network. And we'll be right back with the best buy player of the game right after this. If you have an interest in a career in sports broadcasting, whether it's behind the scenes or on camera, then this is the class for you. Class is held every Wednesday from 1.30 to 4.30 in room 121 alongside the library building. For more information, contact Greg Poff, that's me, at Solano.edu. We hope to see you here next semester. And remember, it's more than just sports. It's an education. <laughs> with your best pie player of the game, Carson Hawes. Carson, how's your arm feeling right now? Uh, it feels great today. Uh, I feel like I had my best stuff. Um, wish I would have threw less pitches, but overall it felt really good. And how did you keep focus with all those tough hitters out there, especially during some stressful innings? Um, I just wanted to make my pitch, every pitch, and I was just focused on hitting my spots and trying to make the best pitch that I could. And we didn't see much of your curveball out there, and you're pretty known for it. I saw a lot more of your fastball and um, your changeup. So what, what were you trying to do there, mix it up? Uh, I feel like I had a little bit of life on my fastball today, so I wanted to stick with that as long as I could. But um, when I was in situations where I thought I needed a curveball, uh, I was still able to throw it. Okay. And how do you think the Rock Hounds are going to be able to top this 7-0 win? I mean, we've got to get another win ne next time, tomorrow. Okay, sounds great.